This is the story of the invisible warrior. Once upon a time, on the shores of a wide bay on the Atlantic coast, dwelt a heroic Indian warrior. He had a very strange and wonderful power, in that he could make himself completely invisible. In fact, he often took the liberty to casually mingle every so often, unseen amongst his enemies, and listen in on their plots. He was known amongst the people as Strongwind the Invisible. Now, Strongwind lived with his sister in a tent near the sea. Many maidens would have been oh so glad to marry him, and he was much sought after because of his mighty deeds. And it was known that Strongwind would marry the first maiden who could see him. In order to choose a wife who was pure at heart, the warrior devised a clever trick to test the truthfulness of all who sought to win him. Each evening as the day went down, his sister walked on the beach with any girl who wished to pass the test. Now, his sister could always see him, but no one else could. And as he came home from work in the twilight, his sister, seeing him draw near, would test the latest girl wishing to marry him by asking her if she could see him. And of course, each girl would falsely say that she could. Then his sister would ask, And with what does he draw his sled? And sure enough, each girl would openly lie, answering, Using a great cord, of course. Then his sister would know that they had been lying, their answers were mere guesses, and although many women had tried to pass the test, all of them had lied about being able to see Strongwind. And so one by one, they all failed, for Strongwind would not marry any who were untruthful. Meanwhile, there lived in the village a great chief who had three daughters. Their mother had long been dead. One of the chief's girls was very much younger than the others. She was very beautiful and gentle and well-beloved by all. Her older sisters were very jealous of her charms and treated her with intolerable cruelty. They clothed her in rags and cut off her long black hair. They burned her face with coals from the fire that she might be scarred and disfigured. And once more, they lied to their father, telling him that she herself had done all these things. But the young girl was patient and kept her gentle heart and went gladly about her work. Now, like the other girls, the chief's two eldest daughters had also tried to win strong wind. One evening, as the day went down, they walked on the shore with Strong Wind's sister and waited for his coming. Soon, he came home from his day's work as usual, drawing his sled, and his sister asked, Do you see him? And each one, lying, answered, Yes. Strong Wind's sister then asked, Of what is his shoulder strap made? Guessing again, they said, Of rawhide? Then they entered the tent where they hoped to see Strongwind eating his supper, and when he took off his coat and moccasins, they could see them, but more than these, they saw nothing. And Strongwind knew that they had lied, and he kept himself from their sight, and they went home dismayed. One day, the chief's youngest daughter, with her rags and her burnt face, 
resolved to seek Strong Wind herself. She patched her clothes with bark from the trees and put on a few little ornaments, the only ones that she possessed, and went forth to try her luck at seeing the Invisible One as all the other girls of the village had done before her. Her sisters merely laughed at her, calling her a fool, and as she passed through the village, all the people laughed at her tattered frock and her burnt face. But silently, ignoring the taunts, she went her way. Strong Wind's sister received the little girl kindly, and at twilight, she took her to the beach. Soon enough, Strong Wind came home drawing his sled, as usual, and his sister asked if she saw him, to which the girl answered, No. His sister immediately knew that the girl had spoken the truth. After waiting a little while longer, she again asked, Do you see him now? To which the girl answered, Oh yes, and he is very wonderful. Testing her still, the sister asked, And with what does he draw his sled? The girl answered, With the rainbow. And finally, the sister asked, And of what is his bowstring? And the girl answered, His bowstring is the Milky Way. Then, Strong Wind's sister knew that because the girl had spoken the truth at first, her brother had made himself visible to her. And she said, Truly, you have seen him. And she took her home and bathed her, and all the scars disappeared from her face and body. And her hair grew long and black again like the raven's wing. And she gave her fine clothes to wear, and many rich ornaments. Then she bade her take the wife's seat in the tent. Soon, Strong Wind entered and sat beside her, and called her his bride. And the very next day, she became his wife, and ever afterwards, she helped him to do great deeds. The girl's two elder sisters were very cross, and they wondered greatly at what had taken place. But Strong Wind, who knew of their cruelty, resolved to punish them. Using his great power, he changed them both into aspen trees and rooted them in the earth. It is said that to this day, the leaves of the aspen have always trembled in fear at the approach of strong wind, for they are still mindful of his great power and anger caused by their lies and cruelty to their sister long, long ago. The end. Hey, 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 hey.